Hey folks, in this video, we're going to take another look at coloring and adding texture. So I'm going to go ahead and do this in real time and I'll talk through how I'm going to explore my process. So we've got this composition here that I just finished creating. And the way I always start out is I think about the mood that I want to convey with this particular piece. This is going to be more of an eerie nighttime type of shot. So I'm going to start off with a cooler color. I might go in with a kind of a medium blue to set the tone. And I'll start off by extracting selections onto different layers so I have complete control over what's, uh, what's being colored. So I'll start off with this post here, Command-J, Command-U, and I'll desaturate it a little bit. I'll select the brickwork here. Command J, Command U. I'll make this a little bit darker because we are dealing with like a nighttime shot. And you can see that I've got some open gaps here for these windows. So I'll switch to my polygon lasso tool, hit cut. Keyboard shortcut L for polygon lasso tool. And if you don't see that right away, then you have to hit the shift L to toggle over to that. This bottom area here is another beam, command J, command U. I'll make that lighter, desat it. And let me show you a really powerful trick here when it comes to coloring. I could use the magic wand tool and individually shift select all of these individual windows, but there's a much faster way. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the polygon lasso tool and make an entire enclosed selection around all of the windows. And then what I can do from there, I'm gonna command J, command U, and it allows me to control all of those windows. And I've got some bricks here, I'll just for right now, uh, I'm not too worried about the bricks, so I'll just, Hit Command J, Command U. And so I've got the building more or less complete. I will be adding some textures here momentarily, but what I like to do is put my color flats in first, add some highlights and shading, and then go in with my texture. So this is actually based on a prompt for not only Kayfabe Tober 2022, but also for Inktober 2022. And the uh, keyword for Inktober is scallop. So I decided to go ahead and make that uh, as part of a little ad. And the prompt for Kayfabe Tober 2022 is TMNT. So uh, I'll make these scallops, kind of give them a slightly desaturated color scheme. Sample that color, fill that in, and again, Thinking smart, try to figure out what selection tools you need to work with. Magic wand tool, as long as anti-alias, contiguous, and sample all layers are selected, you should be able to select um, across all layers. Command J, Command U. I'll make that a little bit lighter. I don't want to make it so bright because I don't want that to be the focal point. I want the turtle to be the focal point here. All right, so now I'm going to be working on the foot soldier. I know that his... Um, emblem is in red, command J, command U. And again, that desaturated red is just great. I'll just work with that. And I always like to look at references. I have references on different displays. So if I type in foot soldier TMNT, I'll be able to see his color scheme. He's largely purple. So I'll shift select and add to my selections here. Um, and he's got human hand, so Command-J, Command-U, make that purple, and make that a darker purple because he's further off in the background. So let's go ahead and use the brush tool to quickly color this in. Who's your favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, I don't have a favorite. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, although I like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I uh, only sporadically watch the cartoon series. I did not grow up with the TMNT. I basically 
Um, at that point, I was just graduating from high school. So this is when uh, this cartoon became more popular. I do remember seeing the books and I do remember seeing, um, you know, the original Mirage comic, which was pretty cool. But, you know, and I've got a few issues of the turtles from those uh, early issues, not the first issue. That'd be worth quite a bit of uh, coin. All right, so now that I've got this colored in for the turtle himself, uh, and I don't know the turtle that actually is spinning the um, staff here, you can let me know in the comments below. Sorry, again, I'm not a turtle connoisseur. I like them, but not enough to wear. I know them by heart. They are fun to draw though, I'll give you that. So if I have open gaps here in my inks, as I zoom in, I've got open gaps. I can just close those in and use my magic wand tool, option delete to fill. I always prefer the magic wand tool over the paint bucket because it gives you the ability to control the tolerance and it allows you to go ahead and color or add color underneath your inks without getting these weird white splotches. And I've talked about that in a previous video. Okay, now we've got his chest plate, Command J, Command U. I know that's typically kind of a brownish color. We'll make the pupils bright because I want that to be the place where your eyes go to. In a composition, our eyes always move towards, if we, especially when we're dealing with a dark composition, we're always moving towards the areas that are predominantly light. So let me fill that in with white. Use my left bracket key to lower the brush size to get in some of these details. Uh, and let me just type in because I'm a total TMNT noob. TMNT with staff. Uh, and I'm looking up in real time, which turtle has a staff? I guess it's Donatello. And Donatello has a purple headband, at least in the cartoons. Fun fact, none of the turtles had colored headbands until the cartoon. And the cartoon did it to make the characters more recognizable apart from one another. All right, uh, let's now color his shell. Command J, Command U. And we'll make that kind of uh, somewhat green. And then all of this stuff right here, uh, I can use just the polygon lasso tool to make a sloppy selection. Command J, Command U. I'll make that a dark purple. I'll make these brown. So this is a very fast way of coloring. Not that speed is always important, but you know, as you start to get more work in, uh, time does become a precious commodity. All right, so I've got that. Now, what about the part where the staff is spinning? So I'm just gonna use the elliptical marquee tool And I'll hit Command J. That puts it on its own layer. I'll make it lighter. I'll use the Transform tool. And I'll use the Transform tool in conjunction with the Skew tool to line up the spin. as best as I can. And then to get the uh, that feeling of movement here, I'll take the regular lasso tool and make a swirl or the shape is a little bit hard to denote here, but it's basically like speed lines, but 
speed forms maybe, I don't know. I'm holding down the shift key, adding to my selection, command J, command U. And now I've got him spinning his staff. Okay, so this is all my color flats. And normally after this, I would think about lighting and uh, you know where is the light source gonna come from because that adds another unique dimension. What if we have, um, you know, the light, you know, it looks like we have some shading on the turtle himself. We've got it on Donatello. But what if we actually went back in and just on his skin, what if I kind of imply a light source that's going to be kind of gold? That gives it a nice little pop. So he does stand out a little bit more. Uh, let's talk about textures because that's another interesting area here. Now you can find free textures online. Go to designcuts.com or creativemarket.com. You will find a, a boatload of textures. And I'm gonna use a texture here for this wood, uh, for this brick facade. So I've got these already organized into various Areas here. Let me just show you what this looks like here. Design cuts, a bunch of other ones. Uh, I'm using a program here called Graphic Converter on the Mac that organizes all of the assets that I have. And let's look at the fall colors here. Let's see if there's anything that can kind of, um, these are all like, they look more cloudy. So let's see if I can find something that has less prominent harsh outlines. That's what I'm looking for here. So this is like a watercolor pack. Um, and it doesn't really, I'm not really so concerned about the color as I am the texture. Uh, maybe we'll make this work here. Let's just drag that in. Let's reposition it. I'll move this to the topmost layer by hitting command right bracket so I can see it, I'll reposition it. And then let's take a look and see what is the, where is the building selection? Where's that entire shape? So we've got our windows here. Let me temporarily, I don't know which layer it's on explicitly, but I'll just use the polygon lasso tool. make a selection, turn back on the texture, hit command J, hide the texture, and I can set it to something like color burn. Kind of gives it a little bit of muddiness, a little bit of distress. You can use these different layer effects to figure out what you want. I kind of like the soft light look. Gives it a little bit more earthiness, grittiness. That could work pretty well. Um, we've got buildings here that are kind of blending in with our background. So at this point we can make some decisions here. So I'm going to just use the magic wand tool and select all of the areas except for the buildings. You can see that I've accidentally selected a building. No problem. Just switch to the lasso tool. I'll switch to the polygon lasso tool, hold down the option key and just use that to deselect the building. Learning your selection tools in Photoshop is a game changer when it comes to being more efficient. So Command J, Command U. Let's go ahead and adjust this. Make it a bit darker. Like so. And let's look at the grayscale test. So in a previous video, I talked about being able to convert your work to grayscale so you can see for yourself whether you've got suitable contrast. I've got that map to command Y. So grayscale looks pretty good. I've got a range of light, medium, and dark values. My eyes go to this circular area. Your eyes will always go to something that is circular. And the lightest values, because this is predominantly dark and medium value tones, your eye goes to the area that has the most movement as well as also the brightest 
values. So that's why I color his eyes white to draw the viewer there. Of course, there's always more that I can do here. Like for example, I'm just looking at this and um, I'll go to the layer directly underneath my inks and I'll sample this brown, pick a lighter value. And then um, kind of add a little bit of visual interest to um, character. So this is another part of the process here. Notice I didn't put a texture over the entire thing. I think that when you're using textures, you have to think very carefully about the type of textures that make the most sense. Texture is material, right? If you're trying to evoke something soft, you want to find something that doesn't have a lot of hard edges or lines to it. Uh, conversely, if you're looking for something that has like a wood grain texture, you can either make that texture in your inks or you can find something that looks similar to it. So um, you just have to be a good judge of what makes the most sense. You know, texture can be conveyed through inks. It can also be conveyed through uh, color and other effects that happen on the, on, the, on the very end. Let's do one more thing and we'll just add a color unifier. It's not gonna really make that much of a difference on this piece because most of my colors already are unified. They're largely cool colors. But what happens, let's just start off with something extreme. We'll just pick a reddish value. This is on the topmost layer now. If I hit option delete, and if I choose say, um, well, overlay is a little bit too intense, but you get some pretty cool monochromatic effects that way. Soft light could work. I'm not digging that red so much. I'm gonna go ahead and take that unifier layer and I'm just going to tweak it by adjusting the hue. And notice that you can get these really, I like, kind of like this because it looks more nighttimey. And I'll just drop the saturation down just a spooge. And you can see what this looks like before and after. So it kind of adds a kind of a bluish tint to all of the art underneath. And it kind of gives it a more nighttime vibe. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Please tell your friends. Uh, I love making videos like this and I'm always looking for new digital drawing or digital illustration topics that come from you. This channel can only grow when you provide me with input that I can use to help you out. So let's get better together and um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.